And I'm really, really happy today to introduce Susan. Hi, Susan. Hello. And Kimmery. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. Wonderful. Right, Kimmery, that's your water. Thank you. That's my chamomile. God knows I need it today. Whew, what a madness. I'm so grateful. Thank you to Morris for filling in today. Right. Woo! So grateful. I've been up since 12 o'clock this morning trying to find someone, a cameraman. But it's so good to have you here, Kimmery. So Thank you. we're going to talk to you today about something that keeps me sane. <laughs> and it's true. Keeps Peace me sane. Keeps me sane. Oh, my God. All I can say is that Kimmery works for a, a group of people called Youth Silent Unity. And they have something called the prayer line. Now, I'm a Jew. You know, that we, we're all different religions and cultures, as you can see. We've got the Sharbat Gula here, which is the Afghanistani girl. We've got the Christmas tree. I um, don't know what the Jewish thing is, but I'm the Jewish thing. Yes. <laughs> oh, so, oh, <laughs> Morris, of course you've got uh, Magen David. He's got a Star of David on him. Magen David. Magen David. So we're all here, all different religions, and, and Kimri's from Silent Unity. And the prayer line is something that I call because they keep me saying... And all I can say is there's a bunch of angels sitting there because I called them today going absolutely crazy where I could not get someone to cover. And it's been like that on and off, as Morris knows. One minute an actress doesn't turn up, you've got to cover this, and it's absolute madness. And there's me wanting to do something amazing for the community to bring us all together. Anyway, can you tell us about the prayer line? Can you tell people out there that there are angels sitting around on that line where people can ring up and they will just raise them and there's no judgment. Absolutely. They just love you and say you're wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to tell us a bit? Well, I can't that? say that we're angels. That's the last thing I can really oh, say. Oh, it's a bit of a letdown. Angels on earth. Angels on earth. Angels I feel blessed mm. to be part of the prayer line, really. It's just that we're supporting people, mm. just people that are stressed out or upset or lonely. Oh, they're ill, you know, and there's so much going on this time of year, as you know, so many stresses on us that people can call us and we will sit and listen, as you say, no judgment, mm. love, and then say some positive words at the end. And it can be an affirmation, it can be a prayer. It's uh, interfaith, so it doesn't matter what mm. religion you are, but it is believing in it's something more than us. Mm. And I think at this time of the year, that I hear everywhere them saying there's not enough um, meaning in Christmas anymore. The children don't know what Christmas is all about. Mm. And there's so much of that being said right now that it feels like a prayer line is there just to help people find more meaning in their mm. lives. Find out more who they are, really. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, I think that's probably what it is. Yeah. You see, that's the prayer line, somebody calling yes. us now to tell us that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's really important, as you say. Everyone, no matter what culture, what religion they are, they can ring up. You see, I've never, ever had that feeling that I was different in any way, being a Jew. Right. And, you know, the teachings of Jesus and all this beautiful stuff about love. It, I've never felt a barrier no, ever absolutely. with unity. No, and I love that. Yeah. And I think in some way you've really got the answer there with unity because you bring everyone together, you sing, you spread love, all the talks about love and Absolutely, everything. yeah, it's mm. always, that's the heart it's of wonderful. who we are. Yeah. Well, have you, Christianity in action is by yes. the sound of things. It yes. is, yeah. 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 I think it's amazing and we're here to spread that word. So do you want to tell um, the camera <laughs> how people can get in touch with Silent Unity and the prayer line and what time she's there and you know what to expect absolutely well we have a direct telephone number which is 01628 628916 and we have as you said these angels <laughs> and volunteers that man the phones in the day basically from 9 30 to 4 30 monday to friday and saturday morning for a couple of hours as well and outside of that there's an answer machine and we have a prayer message something positive mm. uplifting reassuring for people to listen to in the dark hours when it's when they're all by themselves at home and then they can also leave details of their prayer request as well so anyone that they care about or themselves of course um details are left with us and we hold a prayer visual for 30 days and, and for that well, for that means that 
Everyone, yeah, and every wow, name. Okay. Um, wonderful. And, mm -hmm. and basically, it's just holding the knowing that there's only one of us here, basically, mm -hmm. and that there's that greater power. We can call it God, mm -hmm. Spirit, Universe. It doesn't really matter what we call it. But an energy that holds and loves us and is there to, to help us let go of all the, the stuff we no longer need and become who we really are, healthy and whole and happy and free. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Footprints in the Sand. You know Footprints in the Sand, mm -hmm. where uh, this guy says to God, uh, where were you when I was in the most trouble? Usually I could see footprints following me. There was always four pr uh, prints of, you know, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when I'm in the most pain, when I'm really, really suffering, all I can see is two. Mm -hmm. So where are you? And God says, I'm carrying you. I'm, sorry, yeah. I'm yeah. carrying you. And that's what I feel the prayer line is. It, it kind of cradles you mm -hmm. and holds you. And I always feel miracle. Something always happens after you come off there. And somehow, you see, I believe that you can't solve problems when you're in that chaotic yeah. state, yeah. in that madness yeah. and that worry in your head is boom, boom, boom. Um, so when you come off the prayer line, it puts you into that space you can breathe absolutely mm. from the point of peace everything else comes but if we're not mm. in peace it's all discordant that's so, right absolutely yeah. so and the fact that it's non-judgmental i like yes. the sound of that because yeah. often we we feel that our problems are really quite insignificant and mean very little but um but actually to us they it's huge it's, yeah exactly yeah. 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 yes massive yeah. and, yeah. and, and we yeah. help people one by one really and it's mm. and as we pray with another we get it too so everything we say that's positive and uplifting and loving you know, we get it, because as yes, you give, we right. receive. What you yeah. give is receive. So it's just an uplifting mm. thing to be part of. Mm. So um, you're based in Maidenhead, mm. and the phone number is 01628 628 916. It's a very, very easy number, yeah. and you can always leave a message, Absolutely. and you will be put on the prayer line. Absolutely, without but We've got to move on because um, one of our neighbours is going through something and, you know, I need to go. we really yes. need to go because it's not a party. <laughs> so if you're there, like you need we need a bigger space. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. the family there too. Yeah. 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 So thank you so oh, much, Kimmy. Thank, 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 thank you for having me on. Bless you, darling. Thank you so much. And have a beautiful, we'll see you before yes. Christmas anyway. Yes, absolutely. Thank God you. Bless you. Welcome, Paolo. Hello, Welcome, Paolo. Um, Edwina, would you like to take a chair as well? Yeah, we can have well, you sure on as well. Just chatting, we're just okay. chatting. Okay. And we're going to bring Marvin on, of course. We've got lots of brilliant gu guests for you today. But this is our first ever Lucer Ladies. And it's so exciting to be here, isn't it, Susan? Definitely. We've yeah. got loads of stuff to talk about, Paolo. So I hope you don't mind being a Lucer Lady. You can, yes, uh, be fine. Carry on. <laughs> I know Edwina's quite happy to be a Lucer Lady, aren't you, Edwina? <laughs> I think um, one of the really important things I wanted to mention today is um, uh, the vanishing twin syndrome. Yes. Because it's really, really important. A lot of people don't know about it. Um, but apparently there is actually a celebration day, which is the 21st of December. And people actually celebrate and commemorate the fact to say goodbye to the twin or to offer respect. And we're not talking about a twin that was actually born. We're talking about people that are finding out that they had a twin, and I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Um, I'll, I'll just explain a little bit about myself. Um, I was having a lot of abandonment issues last year, and I know how to hypnotize myself, because my husband's a hypnotherapist, and I started doing a lot of hypnosis on myself, and I suddenly felt something. I had this experience where there was another baby in there with me that I was that I had another, a, a brother a sibling it was very very strange um, but to cut a long story short uh, all the issues I was having around abandonment with this friend went the minute I connected inside and I felt such grief and anyway, I left it for a while I didn't have any counseling about it and then it happened again a few weeks ago my husband has to work at Christmas all the abandonment and rejection go inside again and I feel like something is literally connected to me I can't can't explain it anyway I went on the internet had a look on the internet and found out there actually is a, a syndrome called vanishing twin syndrome one in ten people have had a twin and they have the, the twin has, has died 
as a fetus so very very early on so sometimes it's not even picked up and, and I mean nowadays you have ultrasounds obviously in the days when I was a baby we didn't have anything but the thing is that you, all the issues of abandonment rejection not being able to sleep at night in the dark um, all the issues that I was diagnosed with a condition called borderline personality disorder they're all similar so basically all, all the symptoms of borderline personality disorder, which is a serious mental disorder, are very, very similar to the vanishing twin syndrome. Isn't that unbelievable? So I thought it would be really important to highlight this because a lot of people are out there suffering with um, abandonment, rejection, uh, panic attacks, um, depression, all these mental problems, but they could have lost the twin. Mm. So it's really interesting, isn't it? What it's, do you think? Well, it's certainly something I've not come across before. I know a little bit about borderline personality disorder, mm. um, and I know well. There's a lovely book called Walking on Eggshells, which mm. describes it in detail. Because if you know anybody who's had a borderline personality disorder, then that is what it's like. You do feel like you have to walk on eggshells mm. around that person. Um, so, but yeah, I don't know anything at all about. That. I've never come across this before. So, but yeah. it, it, there's some logic in it, mm. definitely. So. It, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, a book was written by Althea Hayton. She's unfortunately died now, or she would have been here today. <laughs> but, uh, but there is an organisation run. It's in Dublin, and a lady called Olga will hopefully at some point we'll get her to Skype. I mean, have you come across anything like that, Edwina? Have you heard of Vanishing yeah. Twin Syndrome? Yeah. It's the first time I've heard of it. Right. Mm. And, um, and w when you first mentioned it, I thought, oh, yeah. you, how, how can two uh, fetuses actually relate to each other? So scientifically, that would be very difficult to explain. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I have, I must admit, um, when you look at pictures of babies, they're always hugging. Or twins. If you see, yeah, twins yes, are always yeah. holding hands or hugging. And, I remember a couple of months ago, I, I looked at something on YouTube by Greg Braden. He talks about the power of love and how important it is. And there were twins born, like you say, um, identical twins. And they took them and put them in separate incubators, like they usually do at the hospital. But then a very enlightened, uh, one, sorry, one of the little ones started to die. Her heart started to give up. So a very enlightened nurse took them and put them back in the incubator. Straight away, the strong one put its arm around the, the other one, and completely, the, her heart started to beat normally, and she completely healed. Maybe we could um, just shut the door. See, as a bit. mother, my my instinct would be, I'd be absolutely horrified if I had twins and they tried to separate them and put them in two incubators. I'd be absolutely mortified. Mm. So yeah, I'm quite surprised that they'd even consider doing that. Apparently, so, this is what they did. Yeah, because I suppose she was very so prim or something. Mm -hmm. Then maybe, yeah. But I agree with you because mm. it's the power of love. How can, I mean, they've well, been together that, for so they, long. Exactly, they've been in the womb together yeah. for nine months to complete, and to then to separate them immediately at birth like that would mm. be dreadful. So this so. this vanishing twin thing is saying that you already bond, that you've already got thoughts. I, I started mm. thinking about that, but you don't have language. But you're somehow communicating with vibrations, knowing that there's someone there with you. And well, I mean, communication gone. is about so much, isn't it? It's about vision, it's about touch, mm. it's not just about actual verbal, you know, what you actually say. So, yeah, mm. I mean, if you're touching somebody for nine months, or even if it's not for that long, even if it's only for a short while, but if mm. you're that, you have that close bond, well, originally you might even have been one egg. If you're identical twins, you might have come from the same egg. Mm. So if you if you but if you look at the soul rather than the science, if you look at the spirit and the soul, there has to be a connection, doesn't there? I'm glad you said that. So. Uh, yeah, and I I personally think that maybe we have a journey, exactly. and we're going to bring Mala on the lady. Actually, <laughs> it's just I'm trying to coordinate everything because I know that people have got certain times that they can be here. Mm -hmm. But we have got coming in the next uh, Lucy Women. Hopefully, we're going to have Jackie Travers Hopefully. from Big Brother. Brother. I mean, yeah. she was on Big Brother last year. Isn't that incredible? Let's, let's all look forward to that. Woo! <laughs>
Anyway. It's interesting talking to her, albeit briefly, because my idea, I mean, I'm, I'm totally narcissistic, as you can probably tell, otherwise I wouldn't be here. But the thought of going on Big Brother fills me with absolute <gasps> horror. And having spoken to her about it, she had a fantastic time. She thoroughly Isn't that interesting? It. So, but there's yeah. another topic. I mean, would you mm. love to be on Big Brother, Mala? Uh, yes and no. Yeah. Which bit? Is, yes, because the, I like the, you know, the uh, the way it's, it's conducted, you know, what's happening and everything. But uh, the downside of it is you have to, you know, you have to be your bear, you know. You bear yeah, yourself your soul, yeah, yeah. and not only to mm. people you know, <laughs> it's for, you know, everybody yeah. can watch it. And mm -hmm. like you say, sometimes people are judgmental and... And then you hear, see yourself in the paper and everything. I think that bit I don't like. No, mm. no. but it's but also edited mind. in such a way that yeah. we only see what we're of allowed course. to see. Yeah. So, and who yeah. actually knows what goes on behind the scenes? Exactly. Yeah. So you don't know what's going on. No. I mean, I, I, but I, mean, I would like the experience of just leaving with total strangers. <laughs> okay. I would like You'd that. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Actually, I probably would. I love yeah, meeting people, yeah. as you can probably tell. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. people as well. I, like yeah. people. I mean, what you said about bearing ourselves, I mean, as performers, you know, I play PF and I have a mental breakdowns on mm -hmm. the stage and go completely crazy, and I bear my soul every time I go out there and I sing. Yeah. But I, but this is different. This is your bearing your personal life. It's affecting your family and everything. Well, yeah, but but, but you not... can't guarantee that they're going to portray you as you really are because mm. once they've edited it, because that was one of the interesting things about I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. I've not, I'm not particularly watched all of them, but Jan Leeming was in it. Now I know Jan Leeming because she oh, okay. used to be our neighbour, oh. and I don't think she came across very well at all in I'm a Celebrity. But she's a lovely person, and I know that because I know her quite well. But the bits they edited every time they showed Joan Leeming she was bawling her eyes out or having a, a you know a, a meltdown about something well she's not like that in real life I mean you know, she doesn't bawl her eyes out and melt down all the time well, so but that's what you see They're going to show so, it. and that's oh, the, that would be the fear for me <laughs> yeah that's big brother could be upset that, yeah as well. exactly mm. so if I was a bit upset because I was missing my family that would be the bit they'd focus on so it's like mm. oh, God, this woman's crying all the time you oh, know my God. <laughs> or whatever <laughs> what about what about so, our, what about <laughs> Marvin, how would you feel? Hi Marvin. Hi. Hey Marvin, it's good to have you Marvin. Marvin's a poet and we're going to see some of his beautiful stuff soon but what, what, what would you feel? Would you like to be on Big Brother? Bearing, bearing one's soul, um, I've done that with my book which is about, um, I'll, I'll talk about that, but I think it's whatever way or route or, or, or vehicle you choose to bury your soul, whether it's Big Brother, I'm a celebrity, or being a, confessing sins, or um, writing poems about your childhood, it, it, the process is, is cathartic because you learn about yourself and and uh, you discover things you didn't know. Mm -hmm. okay. I think a lot that frightens me is doing all the activities. You know, you got to get up. <laughs> like, I'm no good at getting up in the morning, and I don't sleep at night. That would be great fun, wouldn't it? I wouldn't sleep night, at all yeah. <laughs> at night, and then I get up and I'd want to sleep during the day. So they get rid of me very quickly, but uh, <laughs> probably mm -hmm. get a lot of money from my story. Though that'd be good. Yeah, well, then, then I could do whatever I want to do. Yeah, and I think I think having well, perhaps no. I shouldn't really say this that's when it's being televised, but having seen you know some of the housemates from previous years, mm -hmm. being thick seems to help. So <laughs> I'm not thick. No, 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 I'm not saying you are. I'm saying most of the people that. Yeah. Would, and obviously Jackie's not here, so Anna, and she clearly isn't, and that was yes. one of the things that she said very that she enjoyed about this particular series was the yeah. fact that there were some very intelligent people on there. Mm. So, and that is not always the case. So, mm. but the ones who seem to have been the most famous are the ones who've said very stupid things. So, right, is that just me? But that does seem to be. That's my take on it. Yes, what unfortunately. Yeah. Um, what was it? Um, isn't America as an ocean or something? Or what is, how do you spell the UK well, yeah. or United States? Quite a few of those. Let's not yes, go yes, into yes, that. Yeah. That's a long time ago. Unfortunately, she's not with yes, us anymore. No, but sadly. She's moved on as in wherever. Well, but uh, yeah, she was who I was thinking about, but there yeah, are others yeah. I think who've been yeah. terribly bright no. as well. I'd rather get on Britain's Got Talent, and I have auditioned twice yeah, now. I went, I've been filmed, so fingers yeah. crossed. I've auditioned that, that, as well. Really? Mm. 
for what? With a um, group. Do you um, I sing with Glee Club UK. Oh, we okay. Auditioned, which was great fun. Did you get past the? <laughs> no. Did you get filmed? No, we I got, got filmed. filmed. Oh, you got filmed? Did you? I got filmed. Oh, okay. So the next we did get filmed, but we got filmed getting off the bus because there was about ninety of us. Oh, that was really yeah. We were not singing. Yeah, I know. But anyway, we'll see you. I went, I went in there and I thought, what's the most outrageous thing you could do? So I literally walked up to the judges and I went, no, I didn't take my clothes off. And I'll do things like that. I'm 99 years old, you know, I'm in the PF, I'm going to be 100. I went up to them and I said, uh, right, I'm here, get up, I've come to audition you. Go and stand over there, you're keeping my seat warm. And they just started laughing. And then I sat on one of the laps and went, I love an Emmy Lord, who's that swell? Started singing. <laughs> and then I did, uh, Oh, my Baba, you know, Carol, so they could see I could sing, blah, this, that, the other. Anyway, moving on to another subject, which is really important uh, because we're here to support local businesses, apart from the community, of course. Right. I mustn't forget. As you can see behind me, I'll go into that in a minute, it's from the Lions Club. But a lovely, lovely guy contacted me, Junaid, and he was going to be here today. But unfortunately, I don't know what it is, but everybody's got someone who's getting sick yeah. or has got a stroke. You know, the, all these weird things are happening in our world. And on a spiritual level, I feel we're being cleansed, you know, for some for better life, hopefully. Okay. I, I have to believe that. But anyway, Junaid runs a company called Too Busy, number two, Busy to Buy. And I'm just going to write, read what he told me, what I could say, because it's really interesting. Uh, he said, we recommend gifts to customers based on the recipient's likes and dislikes. The gifts we recommend are from small businesses to retailers. Once the customer has chosen the product they wish to buy from the gifts that are recommended, because you can get businesses will register their gifts and everything, we then purchase the item gift wrapped and deliver the item to their desired location. Users can register on our website for free and have access to their personal calendar where they can have set reminders for special occasions in their life. They will then be emailed a reminder each year so they will always remember this occasion for the rest of their life. Wow. So it's called Too Busy to Buy. It's number 2 busy 2 buy .co.uk. As a business, you can register. So, for example, if you do gardening or if you do whatever, you know, hypnotherapy or want to do massages or if you sell clothes, you register on that uh, website, too busy to buy .co.uk. And uh, it's free to register as a business. And then apparently they buy the product, which is quite a big thing. Uh, they must get the money surely from from the person who wants to buy it in the oh, first absolutely. place, yeah. and then they take well, the uh, registration take fee, yeah, yeah. and then they literally go out and they help you. They they buy the product for you. They wrap it for you. So, for example, at Christmas, they wrap the presents for mm -hmm. you. It's a shame I haven't got Junaid here, but he will be here for the next Lucy Ladies. Yeah. Please go, go, Willie, in the new year. So thank you for that, for Junaid. Oh, and now I and need to... Did you say he's a High Wycombe business? He's, he's from local. High Wycombe, okay. yeah. Oh. I think it's wonderful that, uh, first of all, we're, we're here for High Wycombe because we're based in High Wycombe. We're the main local TV station now for High Wycombe. And, and as we know, Susan, you work for Marlow FM. I, yeah, I'm a presenter mm. on Marlow FM, yes. So great, yes, so, we, so we've got a radio station and we've we also have, got Wycombe yes. Sound now and Pippa. Sound, yes, yes. Isn't that amazing? We're yeah. putting Wycombe on the map. Mm. And I hope at some point to become um, a free view. The TV is behind the Sharbat Gula over there. Um, a free view station, like Norwich have got Mustard TV. So okay. we start online. Yeah, just be, we're really we're online. <laughs> we're youtube.com forward slash moving on TV community station. So you can see all our crazy comedies on there, all our wonderful talk shows. And thank you. We want to say thank you to Morris Fleischer from Video Enterprises. That's and correct. We want to say thank you to thank Morris for stepping in. Woo. But coming back to Edwina, you were talking about. Uh, can you explain? Because it was on Street Life, mm -hmm. and it created a massive discussion about yeah. something to do with Reggie Groves. And I think there's a lot of spaces in High Wycombe that are never used. Is that what you're trying to say? They're just lying empty. And they could be used maybe for a good purpose. Is that what you were trying to say? Uh, 
whenever I uh, come across people who are homeless, whether they're friends or just uh, strangers, uh, they, they always uh, have a grief, the fact that they are, we, we have more vacancies for people uh, uh, than there are people homeless. So uh, okay. society does have a means of actually mm. solving the problem. Of course. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the case needs to be so, divided so, differently. Um, are the homeless people, are they refusing to go into the homes that are available for them? Is that what you're saying? I, I think the, the reality is quite complicated, as you yes, said so earlier. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Oh. But uh, what, what about yeah. this discussion that you, you talked about, Reg, the Reggie Grove Centre, or the Guildhall Centre in, in High mm. Wycombe? What well, was I, that all about? Well, at first, uh, uh, I was thinking about uh, uh, the group of people, homeless people, um, who quite often um, gather in a group underneath the guild hall where the marketplace is. Mm. Yes. And I thought, well, um, they, that they were chatting together uh, quite cheerfully. They seemed uh, quite happy there. Mm. And then, of course, there are college facilities uh, and there's shelter underneath. Uh, and it is possible to put up cardboard and, and put, put, put uh, Bedding inside a cardboard and so on. Therefore, it, it, immediately you can create a, uh, a living space. Oh, okay, there. make it so make it warmer. So literally mm -hmm. to create a space there for yeah, them. You mean? That's right. That that was my my first idea. Interesting. <laughs> and you had a lot of interesting comments, didn't you? I mean, yeah, people so were very people, <laughs> people were quite. They were not m most people who replied were not into the idea. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> but in highway comes in loads and loads of empty houses, isn't it? There is it throughout the no. world, or th well, certainly yeah. throughout the country. So I, when yeah. I drive round, I always think these houses can house these homeless people. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm th I was saying early on. It's a council's responsibility. Mm. Well, yeah, but a lot of them mm. are privately owned houses. That there's mm. something like but I, then the I don't know. Has the power to yeah, get well, these uh, people, especially yeah. Whatever, yeah. It's been left for years. Some of the some belong to the council itself. Mm. So, so well, it's I, been I, I left for heard somewhere. years and years. And you think you know there yeah. we have homelessness, mm -hmm. especially in, in in weather like this. You don't want people to be lying mm. down. Mm. Especially mm. in a civilized country, mm. yeah. and all these empty houses are boarded up. And you think and you yeah, have quite a lot of it is the council. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sure I know some of them are uh, owned by the council. One in ten council. houses is empty. Really? really? Okay. I'm sure. Mm. I'm maybe we should like have that. that. Yeah. Loads when I drive right round and I can see, and in Central Highway, come. Really? Yes. Well, maybe we should have them here, and we should actually ask them. The why, why they're not doing why, anything? Yeah, yeah. yeah, because there's a lot. Because we know there's loads of complaints against the council. But I don't know whether well, I should say <coughs> things like that. Oh God, yeah, no, that's what we're here for. Yeah, we're here for. It's a it's my idea. idea. Yeah. Well, if they're privately owned, I mean, there should but still be a, a way where you could actually turn around and say, well, this is house, this house is empty. Why is nobody living in it? Because. Yeah. The people have to pay rent. So if, if you don't pay your council the tax, get some you rent, don't pay they? the council tax. The council people honour you to pay for it. Mm. But why should somebody who owns a house and left it empty for ten years? Mm. Yeah. So it's interesting. So Maybe you could look into it for us. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you could do no, a little bit of research. Just, uh, yeah. When I cross, <laughs> that'd be wonderful. My mind. But he yeah. just crosses my mind yeah. that somebody who can afford to have a house. And leave and it, it empty, empty. Mm. and it dilapidates, you know. Yeah, yeah. Whereas with people living in it, I mean, if you have the homeless, you can tell them to maintain the house. Mm. I'm gonna have to go. Okay, <laughs> so um, afraid, we'll have a break when we'll have a break, break in a now, minute, yeah. and then we're going to. But just very quickly, Mervyn and Paolo, what do you <coughs> feel about how could you help the homeless in High Wycombe? I mean, how do you join in these conversations? Um, it's an interesting question. Um, there's certainly a lot of um, problems associated with people's mental state when they they don't have mm -hmm. a roof over their head, mm. and they're reluctant to become conditioned to living in a place 
Um, it's difficult to know how to solve the problems. It's difficult to know how to 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 contribute um, towards reducing homelessness. But I think the what you've said that the the issue of houses that are not occupied, empty houses, mm -hmm. I think that the council should force the landowners or the owners of the houses mm -hmm. to either make them occupy or maybe rent them out to the council. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Because, I mean, rent is so expensive as well. Private rent is so crazy and so expensive and young people. But, you know, yeah. And what about you, Paolo? How do you feel about all of this? Well, I don't really know enough about it, but it is, mm. as you say, I think it's shocking that in today's civilised society mm. we, have, we have people who do live outside of what we would consider normal mm. housing conditions. Mm. However, having said that, there will be, no matter what we do or anyone does, there will always be those people who will inevitably choose, in inverted commas, to live outside mm. of a house. Mm -hmm. um, and nothing we can do is going to change that. Um, but it is, it's crazy, it is ridiculous, it's so called mm. uh, civilised society. Um, it just doesn't seem right in any country in the world, but in the UK, it's, there is so much more that can be done. Uh -huh. I know there is. And after, I mean, I, I don't know if I spoke about yesterday, I went to the Royal Opera House to see um, Alice in Wonderland, and I just couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't enjoy it. I, because it just kept thinking of what you're saying. It's so, this, people are like, like sardines all packed in and they're charging like a hundred pounds a ticket and, and I just, you know, I just looked at it and it was just very ordinary. I, didn't, I don't know what people are going on about it. There were some good effects, but I kept thinking about what we're saying and what we're doing here on Moving On TV is we're highlighting everything. So please, anyone who wants to come on the shows, we need to know what's going on in your life. We want to highlight this. There are lots of great groups out there now. There's change.org, there's 38 degrees. Mm -hmm. You can do petitions. I mean, Russell Brand, I want to bring him on. He, he's amazing. He's going out there to help this woman, a group of uh, women that are going to be evicted. Uh, this American company have taken over their estate in, in London and they're asking them to pay three times as much rent to live there and so Russell Brand started this huge petition okay. which is going all over the place so there are ways so mm -hmm. we are here can, for you can I sort of say something sure. now which is sure. going to be very super super controversial mm -hmm. um, but why are we expecting charities to bail out people when we have big multinational organizations and we have something like 10% of the world own 90% of the wealth. <laughs> there is more than enough resources, there is more than enough of everything to go around for every single person in this world. Why is Thank it you. that charities have to do this? Exactly. It's wrong. Um, it's so wrong. The whole, the cake, I read a book called Conversations with God once okay. by Neil Donald Walsh. And in the book, God supposedly says, you need to take your cake and you need to cut it up differently. Mm. Then you'll have no problems. And I saw on Facebook, of course, you put that thing about Ebola. Yeah. Are they trying to take what our minds? Why are they yeah, taking our minds off now? And yeah. It's always before Christmas. I'm so grateful that, mm. you know, I'm not the only one. But it's true. What is well, going not, on? I mean, and, what is and going many, on? Many, many, many people mm. feel this way. But quite how are you get people to sit up and take notice of the powers that be. I mean, I think, I think the worst thing I put on Facebook this week I know, that I noticed was that the Lords have uh, managed to fight to keep their 265,000 champagne. They've got a champagne budget. And, and then there's people homeless. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, that's the champagne, but the, there are people homeless, totally. and mm -hmm. I mean, two hundred and sixty-five thousand pounds would go an awful long way to help those, mm -hmm. even if it was just to feed them. Mm. So they might even quite like the champagne. Yeah, it just seems all wrong. All so wrong. come and join us so. on Moving On TV. We'll do what we can. Come and join us. I hope by this time next year we'll have a massive hall full of people, and we can do concerts and fundraising, and I don't know everything together well, let's hope we don't to have change to. the let's, world. Let's try and change the world by encouraging the people who've got the money to put it where it's getting them be. here Susan. Yeah, exactly. Whoever needs to find them, get the money. Who shall we bring pleasure. on then? I was thinking 
I don't know. What about celebrities like Kitty Price? Well, yeah, well, Liam, I don't, don't get me started on what no, they're doing. But anyway. <laughs> Footballers! We can wander school, but We yeah. can wander <laughs> We will bring them on. I, you see, I, I don't, I'm not frightened of anything. I grew up in Israel. I'm not scared of anything. They call it chutzpah, don't they, Morris? You just go out there and you ask the questions. Mm -hmm. And that's what moving on TV is there for. The lovely Susan has to go and pick up her, her pick son, up son yes. who's hopefully going to be in our new soap opera. That would be good. Hopefully yes, he's going to yes. play we the part in Matty. We can work in his school and, yeah. his, um, and his activities. That would be fabulous. Well, we've got a dad and okay. we've got a girl. And I, I'm playing Sue the doctor. Okay. <laughs> no, I, can't, I don't like medicine, but I'm going to play Sue the doctor. Okay. And we've got a Scottish husband who's a homeopath. He's a homeopath. Oh. So it's a marriage, it's called the safety net. It's a marriage between medicine and natural medicine oh, okay. and they create a clinic oh, called the cool. safety net and uh, okay. it's going to be about all the clients that come out. This is our new soap opera you're going to be in, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and we've also got a part, uh, little women coming out, little women set in this day and age. We've done the pilot. Okay. And as Morris knows, uh, Joe dropped out at the last minute oh, and I have no. to cover it. Thank God, Jackie Palmer's. Jackie Palmer's, I love you.